the Boucher reactor has nothing to do with nuclear weapons grade fuel at all. It's a light water reactor. And in fact, George Bush had said that he was perfectly fine with the operation of the Boucher reactor since uh, the Russians would be providing the fuel and would be removing all the waste. Um, it's basically impossible to harvest plutonium out of this reactor uh, for use in any weapons without the whole world knowing. And of course, Iran is still within their safeguards agreement. And uh, the Boucher reactor just has nothing to do with the nuclear weapons program at all. In fact, I think uh, the Israeli journalists, uh, uh, Yosef Melman and uh, the other guy, I forgot his name, in, in their book said that the Israeli government themselves have backed off the claim that Boucher is part of uh, a step forward in any nuclear weapons progress in Iran whatsoever. Any war with Iran would be a disaster. I think that's why the Pentagon is against having a war. There's actually an article in the New York Times today about the Americans uh, calming down the Israelis and reassuring them that if there is any sort of nuclear weapons threat in Iran, it's not immediate and it, they still want to work, uh, you know, use diplomacy to work things out. I think if, if you actually look into what the War Party says about a, any plan for war with Iran, they always just kind of allude to the idea that if America starts bombing Iran, that the people of that country will rise up and overthrow their government for us and do a regime change for us. No one contemplates actually sending in ground forces to Iran. Uh, the only question is, uh, if there are airstrikes, whether they'll be focused on the nuclear program, um, uh, perhaps some more military targets, or whether they would be an attempt to take down the regime. But of course, the idea of taking down the regime from the air is nonsensical. Uh, the people of Iran, as soon as the first bomb goes off, will rally around their government the same way they did when Saddam Hussein invaded back in the 1980s, the same way Americans responded when we were attacked on September 11. So, um, uh, we will not get a regime change in Iran. Uh, I think it's very likely that the uh, Mahdi army of Muqtada al-Sadr and uh, the leftovers of the Badr Brigade in Iraq could rise up against the 50,000 combat forces that Barack Obama has continued to leave in that country. I think American forces in Afghanistan would also be at risk. Um, whether Iran actually has the capability to take out American naval vessels in the Persian Gulf, I'm not sure. Uh, but they certainly could sink oil tankers and probably close the Straits of Hormuz, which would drive the cost of oil through the roof and endanger what's left of the world economy at this point. And offer a nuclear program, a nuclear weapons program that does not exist. There's no Manhattan Project in Iran. Every bit of their nuclear program is safeguarded by the International Atomic Energy Agency under their safeguards agreement. They're not in violation of that. They're only in violation of UN resolutions that demand that they cease their peaceful uranium enrichment which the UN Security Council has no right to demand. And if America would just live up to our own end of the non-proliferation treaty, we would recognize their right to enrich uranium at Natanz. Uh, but you know, the effect of having a safeguarded enrichment facility means that the IAEA inspectors are verifying that none of the uranium is diverted to any military or other special purpose. So it's all still sitting there at industrial grade 3.6% and it would have to be above 90%, in fact, above 94% to really make an atom bomb out of it. And they would not be able to even begin construction on an atom bomb like that uh, without withdrawing from the non-proliferation treaty, kicking the inspectors out of the country and announcing to the whole world that they're doing so. So, uh, you know, so far the Iranian position since the axis of evil speech has been to say, we have our hands up, don't shoot. We're not making nuclear weapons, let your inspectors in. So, you know, all the hype about Iran as a nuclear weapons threat uh, is just that hype. And it's, uh, the real policy is regime change, and yet the war party has no plan for regime change other than start a war and then hope it works out. And this is basically the same way we got into Iraq. They didn't want to discuss what was going to happen after the fall of the Baath, of the Baath regime. They just said, we have to get in there. We have to overthrow Saddam Hussein. And then they had no plan for what to do after that, and we saw the results of that. A million people killed in a massive civil war. And so uh, I think Americans should be careful before they let themselves get talked into another war in the Middle East over a nuclear weapons program. That does not exist, except in the imaginations of the Likud party in Israel and the neoconservatives at the American Enterprise Institute. Nuclear technology is complicated, and the war party is relying on the fact that most people are ignorant of how nuclear technology works. This is why before the Iraq war they said we can't let the smoking gun be a mushroom cloud. If we have evidence, it might be a whole American city lost. 
would be the evidence. So we have to just go ahead and go, and uh, even without the evidence. And um, so the American media, uh, of course, the Israeli government and the American government, all of them talk about a reactor. There's a reactor at Boucher, and it's scary. And there's uranium enrichment going on at Natanz, and it's scary too. And nuclear weapons program, we must have a war. But they never talk about the details. They never explain about the safeguards agreement with the International Atomic Energy Agency inspectors. They never talk about the fact that the IAEA has continued to verify the non-diversion of nuclear material, nuclear material in Iran to any uh, military or other special purpose. Uh, they just don't get into those details. They just say nuclear is scary repeatedly until the consensus in the country is that there really must be a danger there. It's the same way that they literally convinced the people of the United States, or half of them anyway, that Iraq, of all places, was the greatest threat to world peace back in 2002 and 2003. It's the big lie technique. You just repeat it until it must be true. And there are not enough voices of dissent in America who are informed enough about nuclear technology to contradict these people. The ones who are, uh, are not invited to talk to CNN or MSNBC or Fox News. And so the narrative continues on. So yes, in fact, I think the primary responsibility is on the media because of course everything that politicians say are going to be pure lies. It's the responsibility of the media to separate the wheat from the chaff and make sure that people understand what the real truth is. And they have all fallen down on the job in this country.